Developer interview time, number 15 today, and uh, it's going to be kind of annoying because two Germans are trying to speak English, so welcome, Nico. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, Markus. How are you? Uh, fine, thanks. It's uh, quite early in the morning for me, um, but okay. I do my very best. Yeah, I mean, at least we're in the same time zone. Yeah. Um, do you mind introducing yourself a bit? Okay. Yeah, my name is Nico Kübler, and I'm an uh, independent freelance consultant, developer, architect, uh, trainer, whatever you call me. Um, and I'm focusing right now mostly on uh, JavaScript solutions with uh, Node.js and um, trying to, to get these uh, things running on the JVM platform. And um, in the last year, I focused uh, much on the avatar solution from Oracle, which uh, now is uh, unfortunately um, dead, um, or the official way is uh, the Oracle stopped uh, the development. And um, there's another solution from Red Hat called Nodine, and this sounds very promising for running Node.js applications and the JVM integrating um, the, the Java ecosystem. Yeah. Your reason you're looking at all that JavaScript shit? I mean, you're you're a Java developer, right? So, what was your basic? <laughs> yeah, um, originally I'm a Java developer, and um, that's uh, still the, uh, my my uh, um, main focus for earning money. Yeah, I must uh, <laughs> confess, and. Um, JavaScript uh, just makes fun developing uh, applications. And I originally started uh, developing JavaScript in, uh, I think, 2002 uh, with some browser JavaScript and all this shit uh, with um, uh, um, duplicate development for all the, the various browsers. And so I decided to stop uh, doing JavaScript in 2008, I think when um, the jQuery and Dojo toolkits uh, came up. And I said, OK, just uh, only doing Java development, but no more JavaScript. Um, that was fine for um, the years since uh, 2012. Um, then this uh, Node.js uh, stuff came up. Um, uh, they invented I.O. asynchronous um, JavaScript processing on the server side. And um, I also recognized um, the language itself has evolved, and um, it became more kind of a real programming language. And um, so I started again with uh, JavaScript and uh, had really fun doing server-side JavaScript. And um, then uh, Nasson came up with uh, Java 8 in the last year. Um, uh, replacing Rhino on the JVM. Rhino isn't uh, maintained anymore, and um, the, the community um, uh, wanted a, um, a replacement uh, which has better performance. Rhino has a real bad performance. And um, so Oracle released uh, Nasson. And uh, so I have real fun implementing Nasson JavaScripts on the JVM server side. And um, yeah, that's it. It's all about fun. Uh, OK, it's fun. I basically invited you today um, because I came across one of your more famous blog posts, um, which talked a little bit about performance of Node.js versus one of my favorite technologies, which is Java E based on Wildfly. And uh, yeah, what was the reason for you to actually look into performance measurements between those two different kind of environments? Yeah. Um, my customer in the, my last project last year um, had a requirement to have a central service, a real small service, perhaps you can call it microservice, don't know, um, for providing um, a simple solution that um, different applications um, has the, the, the guarantee just to process uh, some IDs only once a day. And um, the, the requests uh, were very high, around um, one to five million requests per day. And um, there are two peak times a day, um, so you don't have an even um, 
number of uh, requests per second. And um, yeah, the, the decision for the, for the back end uh, for the database um, was uh, done very quickly. We decided to use uh, the Redis key value store because uh, Redis is pretty simple to use and pretty simple to, to use in a, in a um, distributed environment. And uh, then I thought, OK, do the middleware with uh, Node.js because um, Node.js has a very good performance and um, the best Redis client is written in JavaScript. So um, I took uh, one hour, one and a half hour to write a simple um, middleware in Node.js. Um, it worked perfectly. My client uh, was happy to have a, um, a quick solution in this a small amount of time, but he was uh, not very happy about Node.js, I must confess. Um, because all his environment is based on uh, JVM stuff, um, mainly uh, Chabos application servers, Wildfly servers. And um, he asked me um, to have a look into um, the same solution with uh, Chabos um, middleware. Yeah, um, I thought, oh, that's um, pretty... Um, um, a pretty huge um, requirement because having very much requests in short of amount of time and um, don't be asynchronous on the server because um, regular um, application server is still a synchronous way. So I um, have a deep dive into um, the, the Chuck's RS implementation rest easy of JBoss and found um, a cool annotation called uh, Add Suspend, which uh, makes my ChuxRS services um, asynchronous, even in a ChuxRS one environment, because um, my customer um, wasn't at this point to um, to use um, Java EE seven. He has um, the Java EE six profile still in use, and um, ChuxRS. Two came with uh, uh, Java E7 to provide asynchronous services. So um, in the standard, we had to use um, the um, ChuxRS1 profile. But with the, the REST EC annotation, um, I found a good way to implement the, the same uh, behavior, asynchronous behavior, in um, Java E6. Yeah, and then um, I spent some effort to, to find um, a good Redis client. In fact, there are two Redis clients for Java. Um, the one is synchronous blocking, and there is another, the Redis client is uh, asynchronous. And um, yeah, putting this together, then um, I had a completely asynchronous uh, non blocking service uh, running on Wildfly. And then I started load test and was a uh, real surprise because um, I came to the same results, the same figures um, uh, as, when, as running with uh, Node.js. And okay. yeah. Before talking any further, is there anything you can show us? That would be amazing. Yeah, sure. I have um, um, the, the Wildfly and the Node.js solution um, here on my desktop. I can show you. Yeah. So then. Um, Let's um, switch to uh, my Eclipse. So here you see um, the, the service. It's uh, just a plain ChuxRS service. Um, application scope, because um, we don't want to, to instantiate a new instance on each call. Yeah, using JSON content type and um, yeah, some initialization of, of the connection. That's not the interesting thing. But at this point, um, my method acquire guarantee has this um, as suspend um, annotation on the uh, asynchronous response, which is injected by ChuxRS as soon um, as we um, access this uh, method. And this asynchronous response allows us to finish the response in another thread um, as it was created. And um, that's really a great, a great way to do asynchronous services in um, REST easy. Um, and the, the number of thousand is a timeout when the service should 
um, finish or, or stop working um, when there's no response set until this time. And um, yeah, we started with the, the um, acquired guarantee and um, the first thing is um, we do um, the operation on the um, on the Redis client, um, the set EXNX is a, um, a native operation on Redis, and um, put the data in here, and, and the, the Redis client returns a future. We can um, register a listener, uh, which will be called when the operation is complete, um, just in another thread. And um, this is the point uh, where the operation complete um, sets the response um, in the asynchronous uh, response, um, depending on uh, the outcome of the Redis and client, and um, will return this response uh, from a different thread to the um, calling client. And this is uh, really, really cool and um, totally asynchronous, um, allowing us to use only about uh, three or, I think, uh, for HTTP worker threads on Wildfly when uh, running around um, 50 parallel um, threads um, calling the service. And um, just for, for comparison, um, the, the same thing in um, Node.js. I'll make it, make it a bit bigger. Um, we have um, our um, Redis client, uh, some connection things, and it's the same thing here. Um, we built um, up the key and set it in um, in uh, Redis, and depending on the outcome, setting a status and write it to the response. Also, asynchronous, um, bit different uh, code but um, the, the whole code together, just around 50 lines of code. It's very short, very compact. But also, if you compare the, the, um, um, the actual Java code, we have also not much code. It's just a bit more um, Clue code around it, just another um, uh, object we need to set, and some some things about the connection and the codec to to serialize and deserialize um, the objects. But um, that's not the point. Um, it can be done automatically by the help of the IDE. Um, the real implementation uh, is just also a few uh, lines of code, and um, yeah, I can show you uh, running this application. Um, so I'll switch to my Redis server. This is running, okay. And I will start my Wildfly server. Okay, should be started. Yeah, it started very quickly. And then I go to my SOAP UI. Um, this is just a tool I'm using. I'm, I'm doing real um, uh, REST services, not SOAP services. Um, so we can just have a look. Uh, at this this is the AT port, and yeah, we have uh, the call, and we get uh, two one zero created. The key is uh, created the first time in the database. When you do it the second time, we uh, get an OK because the key is already there. This was the, uh, the business requirement, and. Um, uh, so here it is, and this is the payload we are um, putting in the, in the application in the, in the uh, register. And now we can do a load test, um, having 50 uh, concurrent threads, uh, a short test delay um, for trying to to have a, a real um, kind of, of um, situation and running this uh, test. Shows us up to, to um, yeah, two thousand transactions a second, um, which is not that uh, not that uh, less. And um, 
if we do the same um, now in, in Node.js, we will see that the figures um, are pretty the same. So I just have to start my uh, Node server. And now I can switch to Node 9000. Okay. And also a test request. OK, it's running. Getting OK because the keys are right there. And have the same, same load test again. And we see uh, the transactions per second are again at the 2000 uh, mark. Um, Nico, did you actually publish the code somewhere that you used? Um, no, I think not yet. But uh, I can do it um, um, after our talk and send you the link so we can publish it um, in your blog post. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, let's people look at it, what you did. Um, you have blog post up and running, and I'm going to um, actually link it to the interview. Um, where you have some more detailed comparison and numbers um, about the load tests, so there's a yeah. lot more to read for people. Um, thanks so much for taking the time today. That was You're pretty welcome. impressive, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and we have a chance to meet again soonish somewhere, latest in Java Land, I guess. Yeah, latest Java Land, of course, okay. sure. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.